Perfect for keeping my motorcycle battery charged up in the winter months. Have it connected to a solar inverter in a shed. I have it hooked up to my 12V Uasa motorcycle battery that's about 8 years old. The battery had an older Uasa smart charger on it ever since it was new, and one night I forgot to hook up the charger and found that my bike wouldn't turn over the next day. Putting the battery on the Uasa charger got it fully charged, but would drop to 10V within a day. Hoping this 1510 Chagger with desulfator does some magic and help bring back my old 12V battery. But if not, it'll still be a fine replacement to my Uasa charger that's almost 10 years old at this point. There are three LEDs on the 1510 charger. The blinking status of each LED tells you where it's at in the charging stage. I attached a copy of the manual that talks about the LEDs and the charge curve. Having owned this charger for quite some times now. It works better than all the other's chargers, Battery Tender Plus, CTEK Muse 4. 3, Battery Charger Say 8, I have. This charger was able to bring the battery that has depleted to zero volts back to life while the others failed. I have not yet connected this. I plan to wire it semi-permanently to the battery in my car for the winter. A couple questions in my mind seem to have answers. Looking at the product, do I want to put it in the engine compartment? Absolutely not. The permanent mounting tab is a tiny screw and a piece of shaped plastic that attaches the unit to a standard 120V duplex outlet. Just a regular outlet to most people. Using the screw you'd normally attach a cover plate with. Looks to me you can leave the cover plate in place, remove the screw. Plug in the charger. Replace the screw with the mounting tab and screw. This won't be waterproof or even water resistant. The plastic and cords don't look to me like heat rated stuff ID want in the engine compartment either. It comes with a generous length of charging cord, but I think I can connect it through a cigarette lighter that's always hot. Be sure it's not turned off with the car, and definitely make sure you get the polarity correct. So most of it can live inside the car. The temperature sensor is going to be the challenge. The temperature sensor seems to be the little tiny thing on the end of a very short cord. See the picture. The female connector has a plus and sign like it has a polarity. But I don't think it does. The little thing with the male pins that says, temperature sensor, is the actual temperature sensor. It has no polarity markings. Connecting an ohm meter to it and putting it in the freezer, the resistance rises quickly in the neighborhood of 13.5 mega ohms and goes down as it warms up. So being mindful of wire resistance, using some heat rated wire through the firewall and to the battery, cutting and splicing the cable, almost certainly coax, and moving the sensor so it's close to the battery in a somewhat protected space should work out. You can buy an extension cable, but I suspect. It would likely be perfect for a long run in an RV. Just make sure you don't get the charging cable for the battery terminals. I saw one place it made that look like the right cable. Careful. That's misleading. It'll come back and rate how my plan works out later. Later, it worked out better than expected. I did need an extension for the temperature sensor, but I had one from a camper battery. Click link in description for more reviews.